and welcome back to our channel. Today's video is going to be about the best ways to find cheap accommodation and this is one of our things that we're very passionate about as we do this quite often. Uh, we are quite often looking for accommodation and trying to find the best deal and we have been doing so for the last god knows how many years. It's probably been about five or six. People come to us to find them a uh, cheap accommodation because we're always talking about how we end up having uh, a really cheap deal and they don't understand how we got it. So I think we, we are do, the people to come to. For yeah, that. I think we do pride ourselves a little bit on it. But I, I like to think that we can generally get the best deal. And I used to work as a travel agent as well. So I do have a few little tips that go along with finding accommodation and the ways to find the cheapest accommodation. The first tip we would recommend is using comparison sites. We use these all the time because they are the quickest and easiest ways to find uh, cheaper accommodation. So the reason they're so much easier to use and so much quicker to use is because they compile the prices from all the different travel sites online and actually put them in one place. So if you're looking at a particular hotel or place to stay, they will usually have that hotel with lots of different prices next to it from all those compiled search engines online and show you the best ones and the cheapest ones. So that's why we find it's usually quicker to use one of these comparison sites. Word of warning though, there are times when they're not always the cheapest. So I say usually to people like shop around regardless of whether you just usually use one site or not. But we tend to use hotels combined quite a lot. And in our experience, it has always been one of the cheaper comparison sites. Hotels combined is always the first one we look at before we look at any other uh, hotel comparison site or hotel uh, booking site in general. So we do have an affiliate link if you'd like to check out Hotels Combined and book your trip through them. We would highly recommend that they are a great source of finding your next hotel. The other two comparison sites that are quite big and what probably a lot of people have used before uh, that we would also recommend is Trivago and Kayak. Uh, I don't use them as often, as I've said, because Hotels Combined we generally find is the cheaper of the three. Uh, but there's lots of different things that you can book on there apart from accommodation as well. And yeah, they're really good to use also. I usually tend to use the other two if Hotels Combined don't have the hotel that I'm after in particular. Or if I'm looking for a little bit of a bigger range. Sometimes these comparison sites will have a different pool of hotels or places to stay. So you just have, kind of have to look between them and uh, see what's going to suit you the most. Our second tip is to not travel during peak seasons and this is pretty much what we've done since we first started traveling together. We've never really traveled over Christmas period or Easter period. We generally go in shoulder seasons or winter, autumn, uh, those sorts of seasons. Because we don't travel in peak season, less people are traveling at those times which means that they bring the prices of the hotels down to encourage more people to go. We know that's not always easy to travel outside of peak times. For a lot of people their time off is around Christmas and New Year's which is quite difficult. And there is another tip that we're going to include today that will actually help with maybe finding a better deal for that situation exactly. So, but in terms of if you've got the freedom to travel during off-peak season or shoulder seasons, which generally tend to be outside of the summer months and tend to be away from school holidays and public holidays, that's usually going to be cheaper times to travel and you will generally get a better deal. I am saying generally because I don't want to generalise too much. There are definitely times throughout the year during winter and, and other times throughout the year where it will be more expensive as well. But if you usually avoid public holidays and school holidays, you're also pretty good. And tip number three is to look on other sites places like Airbnb and Couchsurfing. So these types of sites usually include shared accommodation or even hosted accommodation through Airbnb and Couchsurfing. So uh, these types of accommodation aren't for everyone and sometimes people would prefer to have their own space or their own place to themselves. But for those of you who are open to having shared accommodation or meeting new people in this way, this is a really, really good way to cut down costs and you'll find that you'll be traveling at a much, much lower rate if you were to be getting a hotel room all to yourself. Especially for single travelers who are really willing to meet more people, I think that this is a really, really good way to cut down on your costs overall. And yeah, you'll generally get a much cheaper deal with one of these sites and couch surfing for the most part as far as I'm aware is actually free anyway so it's a really good exchange to go and meet people in exchange for sleeping on their couch essentially so it's a really really good way to start traveling if you're open to that side of things so our fourth tip is to if possible travel in groups so the more people that you travel with the more the cost of the accommodation spreads across so the more people that you travel with the less you have to pay individually so for example we've traveled to Japan and Korea twice 
and we travelled with our friend Jessica BC, uh, Cola and Kaylee's brother Adam and because we were travelling in those groups of four or five we were able to spread the cost of our accommodation across five people which made it a lot cheaper for us and for them as well. And we know that this isn't something that everyone is able to do, but I mean, you don't have to travel every single minute of every single day together. If you're able to get a few family members that really want to travel or even some friends on board as well. Um, what we did usually in our group situation was a lot of the time, uh, Jess and myself would go off and do shopping or do girl stuff, I guess, for a day. And then the guys would do their own thing as well. So there was definitely those moments where we could sort of split up and do our own traveling. And our fifth and final tip is to book as far in advance as you possibly can. The earlier you book your accommodation, the better the deal is going to be generally for you. For example, if you book a trip that's only a week ahead of you, it's probably going to cost you a lot more money. It does a lot of time work on supply and demand. The more rooms they have available, the less it's going to be. The less rooms that they have available if you're in a hotel, the more the price is going to be. And I think we both have experience with this in the fact that Dan used to work for a hotel and I used to work as a travel agent, as I said before. So I think uh, just to explain it even more in depth, airlines and hotels both sort of have categories of pricing when it comes to uh, selling their seats or selling their rooms. And a lot of the time the cheaper rooms will be offered up first and this is well ahead of time so before anyone's really bought the cheaper rooms we're talking like maybe six months plus and then you generally get those cheaper deals. And as those cheaper categories start to wither away and people start buying into it, then you're left with less options for, for rooms in terms of price. As Dan said, it's like supply and demand, and that's why when you do tend to look at prices for a trip the week beforehand, there's not many rooms left, so it's going to be a lot more expensive and supply and demand once again. This is a really good tip actually for people wanting to book holidays over the Christmas and New Year's period. If you're in the capacity to know that you're going to be traveling during that time quite a bit in advance, and I'm talking more than maybe eight months, if possible, but if you can do it as early as possible, you'll hopefully get the best deal from around those times. And although you'll still be paying more at that time than most other times throughout the year, you'll probably get a better deal in that sense. So those are our five tips for finding cheaper accommodation. We hope these are helpful for you. We hope you do take them into consideration when you're booking your next hotel or Airbnb. These are the exact things that we we do when we're booking accommodation. We always seem to get really good deals and people are always really jealous of the, uh, the amount that we pay for our accommodation. I think the thing is a lot of people are under the, the impression that travel is expensive and it can be expensive but it can also be very reasonably priced and I think if you know where to look and you know how to look for those cheaper deals. When it comes to airfares, hotel accommodation, car hire activities, if you know how to look for those cheaper deals then you can really have yourself a very reasonable holiday and something that's definitely not going to break the bank. So we hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Please go and follow us on Instagram and over at our blog wonderwalkers.com and remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to see all the videos that we have coming up in the future. We hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!